with news in your neighborhood. This is Fox 47 News at Noon. Afternoon, Mid Michigan, and happy Thursday. Welcome to Fox 47 News at Noon. I'm Michaela Temple. Let's kick this lunch hour off with a look at today's top stories. A ballot initiative that aims to solidify reproductive rights, including the right to an abortion, into the Michigan Constitution is expected to have more than enough signatures to get on the ballot come November. In fact, some of the volunteers who gathered signatures estimate they have double the number of required signatures. We have absolutely exceeded the goal. That's Gina Keller, the co-founder of Distill Social, a grassroots organization here in Michigan that helped gather signatures for the Reproductive Freedom for All petition. The petition would amend the state constitution to include the right to an abortion, birth control, and other reproductive care. It would also explicitly prohibit prosecuting doctors who perform abortions or women who get an abortion. People are still counting. They're going to be counting throughout the weekend. So I think you can expect an accurate number closer to next Monday. Next week on July 11th, the ballot petitioners, which includes Planned Parenthood Advocates of Michigan and the ACLU of Michigan, among others, will submit their hundreds of thousands of signatures for review to the Michigan Secretary of State. With our partnerships with other local grassroots groups around the state, we collected about 55,000 signatures for reproductive freedom for all. We had over 600 volunteers join our network in over 40 counties in Michigan. The ballot initiative needs 425,059 valid signatures in order to get on the ballot in November. Reports on Wednesday estimated that the petition drive has already collected upwards of 800,000 signatures, which, if those totals are correct, mean reproductive freedom for all has almost double the required number of signatures and is perhaps the most successful petition drive in Michigan history. But opponents see the language in this petition as, quote, dangerous. It's very confusing the way this anything goes abortion amendment is worded. Um, many people have not really been sure about what it is that they're signing when they're on the side of the street. Polo tells me she views the petition as unclear and would force changes to many Michigan laws. We found as many as 47 state laws that would be either modified or repealed by this. The ACLU of Michigan told Fox 47 in a statement, quote, the momentum of this ballot measure and the strength of our statewide network of volunteers is only growing. We continue to be laser focused on collecting as many valid signatures as possible to qualify for the November 8th ballot. Fox 47 will be there on July 11th as we continue to cover this effort to solidify reproductive rights in Michigan. For now, I'm your Capitol reporter, El Myers. Fox 47 News. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has resigned Speaker, after months of scandal led even his closest supporters to abandon Prime him. Minister. The final straw came when nearly 60 members of his government resigned this week over revelations that Johnson had appointed a lawmaker to a senior party position despite knowing about past allegations of sexual misconduct. Treading the tightrope between loyalty and integrity has become impossible in recent months and at some point we have to conclude that enough is enough. Yeah. I believe that point is now. During a verbal lashing in Parliament Wednesday, Johnson sat defiant, refusing to step down. You're asking about something that is not going to happen. Johnson later changed his mind following a meeting with his most loyal allies who encouraged him to acknowledge it was time to go. And to that new leader, I say, whoever he or she may be, I say, I will give you as much support as I can. While Johnson used much of his resignation speech touting his successes and defending his actions, in the end he said he realized his time was up. I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. But them's the breaks. In London, I'm Riley Carlson.
Good afternoon and happy Thursday, Mid Michigan. We have plenty of sunshine as we're taking a live look now over a Fox 47 building. A little bit of haziness and a few clouds off in the distance. As for today, we'll see a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees. Partly cloudy skies. A stray shower is possible later this evening, though most of us will remain dry all day long and a bit humid as well, with winds from the southwest around five miles per hour. As for tonight, temperatures will drop to about 67 degrees. Partly cloudy skies with also a stray shower possible, though any rain will be quite limited, holding off until tomorrow, where we see a daytime high temperature of 79 degrees, isolated rain showers and winds from the northeast around 11 miles per hour. So as we take a look at our latest future track, we're really mainly going to stay dry for today, but then eventually there will be a chance for a few showers later on this evening. Most of us will see partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies, and then the chance of rain will increase after 7 a.m. on Friday building in from the southwest with a few showers moving through parts of Lansing and along I-96 in the early afternoon. The rain will then continue throughout the early evening. Finally, after 6 p.m., we will have a break in our humidity. We will see sunny skies thereafter for the remainder of our Friday and actually all weekend long, plenty of sunshine. The dew point is going to drop back to the fresh zone for late in the day on Friday, staying through Saturday and Sunday. Stay tuned with Fox 47. We'll talk more about your seven day four forecast coming up. Eaton Rapids says it is planning to close up its recycling center after being in operation for over 20 years and officials tell me it's because people are using this site for illegal dumping. Well, I was disappointed because now I'll have to take all my recycling probably to Charlotte. I don't understand why people can't obey the rules. It's uh, pretty simple, really. Joe is not alone. Eaton Rapids officials say they are pretty disappointed too, but over the last few years, people have been using the recycling site on Market Street near Canal Street to chuck just about anything, and it's a habit that's costing the city tons of money and manpower they don't have. For the last few years, it's really been misused, um, unfortunately. There's just people that think that they can throw their garbage, they, they put um, construction materials, we get broken doors, glass, you know, windows. Um, our public works director told us uh, just last week that there was a car hood. Comstock says the site is unmanned and there are no cameras. And for all those years, the city has been operating on the honor system when it comes to drop offs. But now that's going to have to change because the illegal dumping is coming with a hefty price tag to clean it all up. We received a grant from Eaton County Resource Recovery right around $16,000. Um, the city's total cost is going to be probably twenty-five to 30000 So while that does help cover a good portion, at least half of our costs. The mayor says that additional cost is being picked up by the taxpayers, and it's not something city officials say can be maintained long term. That's why the recycling site will close up for good at the end of this month. Officials say there are some plans in the works to open up a new center, possibly in the town's industrial area, but that plan is at least a year away. When this site closes, there will be two other sites in Eaton County that will accept recyclables. We have more information on those locations in this story on Fox47news.com. Your neighborhood reporter, Erica Murphy, Fox 47 News. From going through cancer treatment to building a business, one woman on the east side of the state turned her pain into passion with hope to one day help others. Alexandra Bahu from our sister station in Detroit brings us this woman's story. When Micah Allison started feeling off, as a daycare worker, she didn't think much of it. I feel like I was just drained at work every day. But then at 19 came a diagnosis she never expected. And she's like, well, your test results came back in. It's lymphoma. And I'm like, OK, I'm just looking at her like, I don't know what that is. For months, the Harper Woods resident went through rounds of chemo as she tried hard to keep a positive outlook. I'm pretty tough, I would say so. I just try to, you know, just be, you know, resilient. But Micah said it was after she was in remission from blood cancer that everything she had gone through took a toll. I would say I fell into a depression. Micah said the steroids made her gain weight and she lost her hair. She said she just didn't feel like herself. Post chemo and post treatment, it was just like, yeah, this is going to take a little while to, you know, get myself back to, you know, me. When she started looking at wigs, Micah said they were out of her price range, so she decided to make one. I can watch YouTube, 
and just teach myself how to do it, you know, to just to cut costs and everything. And I did it. And that was the catalyst for the now 22 year old's business, House of Eternal Beauty. It just kind of kept growing and growing. Micah now makes wigs out of her house to sell online. I like to do it. It's, it's something that I really enjoy. And I'm just like, why not? She credits her success to the support she received both during and after treatment from her family and the Blood Cancer Foundation of Michigan. Our goal really is to provide comprehensive, kind of holistic support to blood cancer patients and their families. We're surrounded by a lot of love, of course, and, you know, I just didn't feel any worry in my heart. For Micah, now she set her sights on growing her business with a hope to one day help others. I want to eventually, you know, be able to help people that were in the same or are in the same shoes that I was in eventually, you know, eventually. Green Dot Stables in Lansing will be closing its doors this week. Coming up on Fox 47 News, I'll tell you why and what the owners hope to do next. Start your day with the latest forecast sent straight to your phone. Just download the Fox 47 News app and sign up for our push alerts. We'll send the forecast each morning so you can plan your day. Current temperature and time. Sponsored by Cure Auto Insurance. From... Lansing's Green Dot Stables will be closing its doors this week. Owners Jack and Christine Driscoll said their last day of service here will be Sunday night. The owners say they made the difficult decision to close for the summer after struggling with limited staffing resources. They put the restaurant up for sale last month and say they're hoping to either reopen in the fall or lease or sell the restaurant to a new owner. As a result, they said in a statement that they're focusing their limited resources on their second location in downtown Detroit, which will remain open. Lansing's Green Dot Stables is located at 410 South Clifford Street and is open until this Sunday at 10 p.m. Come out and grab one of their famous burger sliders while you can. Reporting for Fox 47 News in Lansing, I'm Hunter Gadwell. Being diagnosed with Alzheimer's can be scary for anyone. And when it happens in the LGBTQ plus community, people tell me that there's a number of hurdles and stigmas that they face. And over time, they say it really takes its toll. We've been together 36 years, married six. So we were uh, fortunate enough to get married on our uh, 30th anniversary. A memory Roger Bushnell says he'll never forget. But now that Bushnell and his husband are getting older, they're starting to prepare for what's ahead. I know myself with my husband and I, we have um, we've been recently having quite a few discussions about making sure we're set up in the future. Since they don't have children, it's a bit challenging and having loved ones looked after them is not a possibility right now. Because of some uh, religious differences, shall I say, uh, between uh, my sister-in-law and uh, my husband and I. Uh, the relationship was not built as strongly as I wish it would have been with my nieces and nephews. It hurts, he says, but what they're experiencing is what many couples in the LGBTQ plus community are facing. Historically, um, they have not had access to marriage, so they're less likely to be partners. Um, they're less likely to have children, and partners and children are very often our natural support system. Kate Pierce, the director with the Alzheimer's Association, says everyone needs that nudge to go to the doctors. When you don't have that, diseases like Alzheimer's can't be detected early. In fact, we, we have a uh, higher risk of Alzheimer's and dementia than the general population, partially because uh, we tend to have more issues with uh, being overweight as we get older, um, hypertension. And higher rates of alcoholism and substance use, the fear of discrimination also holds them back. Um, and then they're also not accessing support services that they would benefit from. Um, so things like Meals on Wheels, services through the Alzheimer's Association, home care, again, because you just don't know, is the person that's coming into my home going to be accepting of me as an individual? Even right now here in Michigan, it is not illegal to discriminate against someone in healthcare, in housing, based on their sexual orientation. That discrimination is something that people carry with them their entire lives, Bushnell says. Uh, in fact, 30% of the LGBTQ plus community 
feel the need to go back into the closet. Which leads to extreme isolation, Pierce says. Both say the way around all of this is for people and businesses and organizations to expand their definition of what a family is and be accepting of who they are. We should be considering um, seeking training for those in our industry uh, to better understand uh, where we're coming from, some of the fears that we might be facing. So when I asked of other ways that people can be helpful, they say that by creating support groups for LGBTQ plus caregivers can be so important. Knowing that you are supported during these challenging times is very helpful. And they also say just by asking people their pronouns, it's another way to show that you care about their community and what they're going through. Stay with us for continuing coverage on air and online at fox47news.com. There's We're learning more details about the victims killed during the shooting at a July 4th parade in Highland Park, Illinois. The northern Chicago suburb continues to grapple with the horror. Chris Nguyen shares the stories of the victims and breaks down what we're learning about the suspect. In Highland Park, Illinois, a community grieves after enduring the unthinkable. Two-year-old Aiden McCarthy, now an orphan, following the July 4th parade that killed seven people, including his parents, Irina and Kevin. I don't know how they're going to tell him. Senator Tammy Duckworth says Good Samaritans found Aiden underneath his father, who died at the scene. I'll never forget. I pulled up and I said, this is not our kid. It's not his blood. He's okay. What should we do? And a cop said, we can't be babysitters now. Can you take care of him? The suspect, Robert Cremo III, made his first court appearance Wednesday and now faces seven counts of first-degree murder. The victims, ranging in age from the 30s to the 80s, dozens more were injured in the attack. There are many different charges that we are reviewing with respect to the other individuals who have sadly been injured by this. Frankly, who were present on the scene, they were shot at. That may also constitute an attempt murder charge. Local authorities say the suspect, who is now being held without bond, opened fire from a rooftop as the parade got underway. More than 70 high-velocity rounds were fired with a rifle, similar to an AR-15, according to a spokesperson with the Lake County Major Crime Task Force. Authorities say the suspect contemplated carrying out another attack in Madison, Wisconsin, with another weapon in his car, but ultimately did not go through with that attack. I'm Chris Wynn reporting. President Donald Trump's former White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, will testify before the January 6th committee tomorrow. Cipollone reportedly agreed to speak to the committee investigating the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol in a private transcribed interview. It's been reported he did not agree with Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election. His testimony has been highly sought after since he was Trump's top White House lawyer who was in the West Wing on January 6th. Last week, former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson testified that Cipollone warned there would soon be, quote, serious legal consequences if Trump went to the Capitol to join protesters and that Trump associates would, quote, get charged with every crime imaginable if it had happened. Cipollone previously gave the committee an informal interview, but has yet to provide testimony on the record. After finding a postcard at a Michigan antique show, one man decided to make sure it got to the proper person 73 years later. Ryan Florios found the Penny Postcard at the Flat Rock Speedway show. Now Penny Postcards back in the day got the last amount of attention by the post office. Sometimes they never even were delivered. The postcard, which was sent from the Boston area on October 5th, 1949, is now in the Boston area where Bob Brownson lives. And that postcard was from Brownson's mother. Ryan did some detective work and found Bob on Facebook. I, I, I must admit, I got a little emotional about that. But I thank you so much, my brother. You, uh, you've done something very wonderful. The two then became fast friends, and it's as if Bob's mother knew this day would come back in 1949, writing on the postcard, if I don't get lost, I'll be seeing you. Insurance.
Happy Thursday, everyone. A few stray showers are possible today, but the greater likelihood for rain will arrive for your Friday. Breaks of humidity finally arrive late in the day on Friday before plenty of sunshine, comfortable conditions, and we'll also see temperatures in the lower 80s for Saturday and Sunday. Today, a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees with slightly higher humidity. Winds from the southwest around 5 miles per hour with a stray shower possible later this evening and tonight. An overnight low of 67 degrees with winds from the northwest around 5 miles per hour. Our future track shows a system towards our southwest. That's going to provide the chance of a stray shower later this evening and tonight. Rain will then eventually creep in towards the Jackson area early tomorrow morning, reaching Lansing and I-96 for the early afternoon, where we could have some moments of heavy rain. Then, by 6 p.m., all of the rain will eventually fall south of I-96, welcoming in a drier atmosphere for the remainder of our Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which is going to make it feel more comfortable in addition to that sunshine. Currently, our latest drought monitor shows abnormally dry conditions, mainly along and towards the north of I-96, with a moderate drought beginning north of Lansing. So this is something that we'll closely be watching for you here at Box 47. Our dew point temperatures, which is directly correlated to the actual feels like temperature, we will stay in the humid to muggy zone for today. Tomorrow, dropping right down to the fresh zone by later in the evening and staying in the fresh zone all weekend long. Our Super 7 Day Planner showing a high temperature of 79 degrees on Friday with a chance of some showers. Dry skies thereafter with high temperatures climbing back to the mid to upper 80s next week. As we take a deeper dive into our latest Super 7 day, cooler than average temperatures are likely between July 14th and July 20th. Stay tuned with Fox 47 for your latest forecast updates. All the time we have for Fox 47 News at noon. We'll have more news you won't want to miss at 530.